guy loves to school on rookies. So we'll see what Origin does. I hope to see XL try and get themselves a counter pick, save specials pick for last to make sure that he has a comfortable laning phase going up against Duke Duck. But they're on the red side, so they can get that counter pick pretty easily. Carthus banned away from Origin on the blue, Yasuo from XL. And we have seen, you know, a couple of Carthus bans already today. Seems like he's still a very strong jungler. Wasn't touched in 9.3. And there's the Silas ban as well, once again on the blue side. Looks like teams recognizing that with an extra week of scrims, Silas is becoming more and more relevant and scary, and they want to take it off the board. Fascinating that it is being banned on the blue side. To me, it means that things are higher in priority but you can't afford to give him away alongside some of the other champions available. So still things left available, Lucian and Ezreal, two of the big picks, with Draven being banned out. Ooh, with the uh, Lucian ban away, I wonder if XL are forced to ban the Cassio here, uh, given that you kind of limited your options. Even after the nurse, many uh, pro players consider Cassio to still be very relevant in both bot and the mid lane as well. But Ezreal's still up, Urgot is another champion that's still yep. up and available. A uh, couple of still strong picks, Sejuani, depending on how strong you consider that as well. Lissandra is something we saw some high value on earlier in the day. And it's going to be the Jace ban as the final roundup there from XL. So that S tier top laner removed from the pool. And straight away, Origin will go towards the Urgot. No real surprise there. He was not touched on the previous patch, so they'll continue to prioritize him. I think Kennen is a great pick. And to him, we've seen it picked multiple times. Rise is also a perfectly fine matchup and something that many teams will still consider. We have seen Expect bring out the Rumble a couple of times. Uh, I mean, it's probably a fine matchup. But but I don't think you need to put high priority on it. Instead, with Ezreal still being the primary AD carry left open, no surprise that Jessica goes for it, but I feel like Origin had this plan in mind. So we'll see what they decide to go for to try and answer. Callista is something that Patrick has been playing a lot of recently. And a very strong AD carry in his hands as well. 12, 1, and 10 across his two games on that champion. I do like the Braum pick here from XL. Take it away from uh, Mithy, because Braum, of course, very good into the Ezreal, can block his entire ultimate with just that unbreakable shield and Origin have a little bit of time to think about what they're going for. It looks like it's going to be the Thresh for Mithy, Mithy down towards the bottom lane and team it up with a Sivir. So I know that Sivir is considered a pretty solid pick into Ezreal. Um, she scales extremely well, she can spell shield a lot of his damage. Um, however, going up against a Braum, I feel like that makes her ability to push that much harder because as you already mentioned, his unbreakable will can block a lot of the things that she tries to output. Um, so I'm a little bit surprised. I do think they'll lose a little bit of push pressure. Oh. Oh. But immediately, wow. Best game of the LEC stage. Oh. Playing into Nuke Duck and he picks up the LeBlanc. Yes, it is a final pick. It's a counter pick of possibility because you can ban away anything that's strong into it. But that is a very ballsy move there from Special. Now, I wonder if they look to ban away the, the Malzahar as well. It's something that Nuke Duck has already played this split and is a pretty solid pick into the LeBlanc. Um, but you're then going very much towards scaling and arguably you lose some of the damage on the side of Origin. Uh, thinking about potential others, Syndra is a maybe going into the LeBlanc. Uh, she can play pretty well because she can interrupt the dash with her stun and she does have decent bursts to try and mitigate that. Would you ever play something like Cassiopeia into the LeBlanc? Potentially, yeah. Cassio's another one she does fine because, uh, I mean, I mean, if you watch Chovy play the LeBlanc into Cassio <laughs> matchup, then uh, maybe you'd say that it's LeBlanc favored, but typically uh, <laughs> Cassio should have an advantage in that matchup. I think you could watch Chovy play a Thresh into Zoe matchup and somehow it would become Thresh favored. So there's the right. Actually, now that you mentioned Zoe, that's another champion that you've got to take into consideration as well. We already said it at the earlier uh, in the last game. She's been rising a lot in popularity over in the LCK. So, um, uh, yeah, surprising we haven't seen more of it recently. That is the Lee Sin pick in for Cadrill in the jungle. Gives himself a power pick. Early jungler. Haven't seen him on it yet. And something you mentioned in the first pick ban as a strong top lane, and we actually saw banned out is the Yorick. Always a possibility here for XL if yes. they want it. Very, very true, Yorick. Uh, really strong split pusher, uh, can be pretty obnoxious in lane. I'll be honest, I've never seen an Urgot versus Yorick lane matchup, so I can't say I'm super familiar with how it plays out. I've not seen it either, Vedius. Okay, we will good. learn together. We will learn together. Uh, but I've got a couple ideas. In the event that it's picked, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it then. Right now, it's the final pick. Counter pick for Nuketuck. What does he go for? We've already ran through a list of champions he could go for. What does he want to do? Does he want to be a carry? Does he just want to mitigate the LeBlanc? Corky Ooh. is an option, and we'll yeah. get locked in. 
So oh. we're going carry. All yeah. right, I quite like this. Now, with the reintroduction of um, Infinity Edge into the meta. Oh, you called it, Medic. Oh. The prediction god, the Yorick, coming out into the Urgot. Looks like XL came in with a clear draft plan. Looks like they got pretty much everything that they wanted. With the Draven ban, they forced the Lucian ban, meaning they could prioritize the Ezreal. They knew Origin would go for a very early Urgot ult, and they already had the Yorick counter pick prepared. Uh, and then by going for an early LeBlanc, I would not say that Corky counters uh, LeBlanc, but she can definitely, he mitigates her um, pressure that she provides mm -hmm. in the laning phase. So I think the way in which XL have drafted is very much towards what they've planned. I think they're pretty happy with what they have gotten. Yeah. The question is, can they now execute it? Because one of their big issues is that during the laning phase, they often fall behind. And then when they try to make plays in the mid game, they're often at too much of a deficit. So your eyes turn towards Cadrill to help the laners through what could be a rough laning phase. And on the Lee Sin champion, he has the ability to do it. The question is, will he be able to pull it off against the likes of Origin, who have been on the rise over the last few weeks? And they have a lot of safe laners. Corky, Severe, very difficult laners to gank. And then Urgot, he's very obnoxious, but pretty low in mobility, so maybe you can set up some plays with the uh, Yorick on the top side of the Yeah, put him in that little box of zombies, the Dark Possession that you get from the Yorick in the W. You can't really get out of that if you are the Urgot without using your Flash. So I do expect, as you say, to see Cadrill up towards that top side quite often. The question will be, how can Cold mitigate that and Lee Sin? It's the first time we've seen Cadrill play Lee Sin this split, but he has had a propensity towards those more aggressive jungles. Now, this is the first time that we're seeing Yorick in the LEC, but it has been played over in North America. Yep. It's also been played uh, over in the LCK. Yep. Uh, at, I believe this is the first time that we're seeing it into... Uh, oh, I, actually, over in North America, I think they played into the Urgot. So, really excited to talk about this matchup. We are going to be jumping onto the Rift, ladies and gentlemen. Origin versus XL. Mm -hmm. So let's dive straight into it. Yorick, have yeah. you learned the ability names? I've looked them up. Ah, oh, you cheater. I, know, I looked them up before the cast. Okay. So that's fine. I have looked them up again. All right, look me in the eyes and tell me them. Okay, what? Do you want passive? Yeah, passive first. Okay, they can look at the screen! <laughs> <laughs> I don't, they can't see that, that is. <laughs> Shepherd of Souls. <laughs> uh, the Q is the last rites, but then it also has a second proc called Awakening. Ooh, good W one. is Dark Procession. The E is the Morning Mist. Yep. And that's the one that sometimes makes things scream a little bit. Yep. And then the Alt is the Eulogy of the Isles, which summons the Maiden of the Mist. Nice, excellent. Right. I'll give you four points out of ten, because I saw you glance at the screen multiple times. You full points out of ten, you say? Four. Full four, points. Four. That's very kind. So the thing about Yara is um, early laning phase, uh, he he's pretty weak okay. because a lot of his damage comes from the ghouls that he spawns and they scale with level, which means that the more levels that he has, the more items that he completes, the stronger his trading becomes. Now, he's a menace in the mid to late game um, because not only does he have a heal on his Q, but typically you often, you'll often you see a lot of Yorick's max the W second, the, the little, uh, you just told me the name of dark it. Dark Procession. The Dark Procession, because it actually has four health bars at max rank, mm -hmm. which makes it really difficult to get out of. Um, and so, once you've gotten those two abilities together, once he's hit that level 13 point, uh, he's really obnoxious, he's really difficult to trade with, and you can actually, you're surprisingly quick, because when you land your E, you have a surprising amount of movement speed, and you have a lot of crowd control in your kit as well, so you can just, you can just stick to targets and chase them down and outduel them as well, so he's, he's really built for skirmishing and fighting and trading, uh, and I think that's one of the cool things about him into the Urgot matchup, who just likes to harass you and bully you and force you out of lane. I'm actually really interested to see the uh, purge interaction with that Dark Procession as well. When Alfari pops that W, will it just clear out the uh, walls oh, incredibly quickly because it's auto attack based? Yeah. We will watch for that because that could be a way that Alfari can counterplay this matchup. Uh, we, we've talked a little bit about the top lane as we started off, and you mentioned mid lane in terms of the Corky being relatively safe into the Blanc as well. Bottom lane, I think it's going to be pretty much a farm fest early on. I don't really expect to see too much action down there. Well, uh, Jeskula and Kasink have already gotten the early level two. And the thing is that we talked about uh, early levels, uh, I think if my prediction is correct, yes, Kasink has actually gone for his shield, his E second, mm -hmm. which again, mitigates a lot of the pushing power of Patrick. And so as you can see, the wave clear is not as strong on the Civic. Kasink will able to extend it though, the Ignite comes out, doesn't matter about the wave clear, if you can just bomb champions, Mythic gets first blood, and I'll on the right, board. So he just completely ruined my point as uh, he ends up dying in the two versus two. He tries to mitigate the wave clear from Severe and he then loses it once the hook ends up landing onto him. So he then doesn't have that damage reduction. And uh, Patrick and Mithy find themselves a uh, 2v2 kill. So kind of classic XL fashion, falling behind 
in the uh, laning phase. Yeah, especially that bottom lane. But Jeskal does have the Kleptomancy, so he'll be able to farm up a little bit of gold even without Kasing being there. Kedra's path towards this bottom side. Let's have another look at this, because honestly, this is just Kasing totally misplaying. Yeah, I, the thing that surprises me is he wouldn't run behind his own minions. Uh, because then they can body block yep. the... Uh, and he had flash. For him. He also had flash. Right, yeah. When you see that hook coming in, you should be flashing away. And his, his E literally just ran out. So yep. And so Siva got the max damage on, on her Q. So, yep, big misplay. Uh, big oopsie. Means 800 gold lead right now. Or 1,000 gold lead, rather, for Origin. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, great stuff. Sizable sum. Uh, top lane looks to be like Expect just has a little bit of a push priority in this lane. Uh, puts down those graves and then the ghouls come out after three of them, assuming you use your empowered Q. Nuke Duck trading in with Special here. Very brave of Special, I have to say, to pick Bill LeBlanc into Nuke Duck when Nuke Duck has so much more experience than Special does on the LEC stage. Yes. Um, the thing about LeBlanc, though, is you can see that Excel have drafted very much a one through one comp with the split pusher and the Yorick and uh, the ability for LeBlanc to move off to a side lane. Um, this lane gets really hard when Nukta goes for a Hex Drinker. If the lane is going fine and he doesn't feel that Special is playing aggressively enough, he might just forego it and instead prioritize the Trini Force and then translate that into an Infinity Edge. Um, however, if he respects the amount of aggression that Special is outputting, then he will go for an early Hex Drinker. And at that point, Special pretty much loses all burst um, that he'll have available to him. And, we do see both junglers entering the mid lane. Cole just showing up to assist. Oh, Patrick has to use the heal in the bottom lane as well as Jessica went aggressive. Ah, uh, Mithy actually went up for a roam towards the mid lane, maybe punish special a little bit. Uh, and there were two wards from the side of XL behind the dragon pit that Cold is walking over right now. So XL were able to spot that one out and force a summoner spell out from uh, Patrick. So good stuff there from the side of XL. Definitely is. Uh, Kedro actually looks to be ganking the top lane here as Alfari, maybe a little bit too far pushed forward. Kedro jumps in, and Alfari uses the, dis the uh, disdain to get away the E on the Urgot there. So no real uh, action for XL in the early portion of the game. Maybe expected Kedro to have a little bit more impact on the map. It seems to be cold. It's all right, we're five minutes in, mate. I want more action, Vidius. I mean, that's fine. I mean, not everyone double teleports into a bot lane at, like, level two. Um, but yeah, I think things are going fine for XL. Uh, the fact that their 2v2 died in the bot lane is obviously not yeah. great. But that was then somewhat mitigated by the fact that Patrick was left alone in a 1v2 and Jessica could actually build up a bit of a CS advantage. He's now going to come back with the Sheen. He also has teleport, so we can just keep him back. six here, lane. though. Expect. Puts him in the box. And the uh, box will be clear. Oh, so there you go. His his W doesn't just proc. But was his, was his W still active when yeah, he was I in so. there? I think so. Oh, yeah? So that's okay. what I think, yeah. Well, then that's cool. That's a good way for Expect to keep our fire under wraps. I mean, you'd also think that they would have noticed that as pro players and been like, ah, oh, this matchup probably isn't that good. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. He could just clear out my W almost immediately. Um, the other cool thing to know about Yorick is he has kind of had a number of buffs. One of the big buffs that he's had is his, his R is now pretty much permanent, uh, which is really annoying to deal with, because you can just kind of let her free, and she'll just run off onto a side lane, and she'll keep pushing until she dies. So uh, something I'm sure many solo queues have experienced, um, probably in recent history. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she just sticks around in lane, and her trading is really strong and obnoxious. And you can actually choose whether she stays near you or whether she just walks down the lane now as well. Yes, exactly uh, yeah. that. Sorry. Uh, I, I want to just talk a little bit more about the new mid laner for XL Special. This player that's been around the Challenger scene for quite a while, has played Misfits Academy last year, was a sub for the Misfits squad, played on one of my favorite teams ever called Burger Flippers. Mm -hmm. He's from the Netherlands, and I actually believe that his uh, family are here in the audience today to oh, watch cool. the debut of, his, of their son in the LEC. They're filming it. Very, very cool. You can get the VOD later if you want, <laughs> sir. It's on switch.tv for such Riot Games. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, a very special day for special. Haha, <laughs> I see what I did there. Um, and <laughs> Great stuff, Eddie. Thanks, Great stuff. Um, And so far in lane, he's doing fine. But as we can see, the respect being shown from Nuke Duck, the Hex Drinker coming in very, very early means that now special will lose a lot of kill pressure in this mid lane. If Kadrill comes, they still have the ability to shut down Nuke Duck, but I kind of want to see special roaming. Um, they okay, have so vision set up in the topside river, so if anywhere, topside would be a good place for him to try and roam. So then where, where are the points in power that XL might be waiting for for this LeBlanc? Like, are they waiting for her to get her first completed item, or can she just start roaming straight away? Uh, Ludens Echo is the usual go-to. Look at that damage coming out from the Yorick. It's a very angry maiden. 
Yeah. Uh, Luden's Echo is normally the go-to point for most of the Blanc players. I feel that once she has that item, she needs to be doing something. Uh, and it's not like she falls off. Um, she's quite fortunate that there aren't that many tanks on the side of Origin. Uh, but there are a lot of ways to interrupt her, which is something that she will have to be careful of with things like the Thresh Hook and the Flay and the Gragas E and the Spell Shield and the Corky W. Yeah, this isn't a fun game for the Blanc. There's, uh, there's definitely a lot of things that are just very obnoxious for her to try and get her usual place on. Really good secure there from Kedro, though. No vision uh, from the side of Origin. So Kedro able to sneak away that Infernal Dragon. And we're looking for these, these first points of... Uh, power these first item pickups maybe for XL before they can really start doing some more on this game because they're about 500 gold behind but I don't think they'll be too upset with the state of affairs. Yep, not the end of the world. Origin do have very good scaling. Uh, Corky and Severe used to be a big powerful duo. Corky and Ezreal was an old duo as well, the double training force duo. Uh, but basically once Corky has Infinity Edge uh, and Rapid Fire Cannon, and same thing for... Uh, and Trinity Force as well? Ah, yeah, sorry. I just assumed Trinity Force is a staple. Yep. My apologies. Uh, you got Trinity Force into Infinity Edge into the Rapid Fire Cannon, and then Corky hits like a truck. Remember, he also does 80%, I think, of his damage is magic damage, mm -hmm. um, or gets converted to magic damage, rather, uh, meaning that he's really, really annoying to itemize yep. against. Um, Super tough, especially when you have something like a Sivu on the team as well, who just has... So much arm, like she just does so much AD, so much physical damage. So uh, really, Origin waiting for the three items. E Excel, you're looking maybe for a little bit of roaming from special at one item. Jeskler will be going to two, three items on the Ezreal as well. He's still just as powerful as he was on previous patches. Ooh, ooh, look, medic, look, trading top lane. <laughs> Sorry, I get really excited <laughs> about top lane. I mean, it's, it's oh, trading jungle. Oh, jungle trading. Mithy flashes in. That's a play as well. Kedril looking for the jump across the wall. The hook comes out. Kedril ignited the barrel to the back, and that is an easy enough kill for Origin. Man, I feel like people have just forgotten what Sivir Ultimate does. Uh, ooh, it's the Nuketuck. Super Gopher special. Looking for the solo killer on Nuketuck, but the Hexstring to Shield will keep him alive. All right, so keep your eyes on the Flash QW Ignite. That's Here enough to kill. I'm keeping my eyes on it, Vedius. Flash QW Ignite! It's not quite enough to kill, but here comes Cold, flashes in, and Cold will belly bump his way to second kill of the game. The fact that I read it meant that Nuke Duck read it way <laughs> before I did, and he was just sitting there waiting for it. He said, Cold, you need to come mid lane. Special's going to try and kill me. I'll bait it out. And the Flash W comes in from Special, uh, and he ends up getting punished for it. He's going to lose this whole wave, and uh, yeah, very, very good read there from the side of Nuke Duck. Unsurprising, considering he's played 284 games, uh, 255 games, sorry, on the LEC stage. He's also just played a ridiculous amount of LeBlanc, and because I, I was looking at it from a special's point of view, and I was like, I have enough damage to kill this Corky. Yeah. I just need to wait for my W to come up. Um, are we, I think we're going to start with the replay. Yes, 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 okay, here we are. So this is just the severe ultimate combined with the flash from Mithy. Really good opportunity for them to find that pick. And then Special gets a really good trade here. I like this a lot. Uh, Nuke Duck shows patience. And notice how he turns back onto Special and trades, knowing that he can actually trade back, given that he has the Hexdrinker shield. At this point, he's like, OK, my shield is gone. This guy's going to try and kill me. Um, oh, no. I can't oh, kill him. No. We've seen that Cold face many times before. Alpha getting dived in the top lane. Lots of damage coming out from Expect and Kedra. There will be the kill. Expect tanking up the tower. Cold coming in. Unable to quite connect in the barrel. We'll just catch the end of Expect. So maybe Cole can do a little bit more here because Mithy's on his way. Expect no flash. He's going to be left for the Wolves. Tries to trade back onto Cole, but the last rise is not enough to heal him up. And Cole gets his third kill of the game. First kill for XL, though. They are finally on the board. Yeah, XL getting punished across the board right now. Uh, good dive, though, from XL. You can see how uh, tanky the Yorick actually was when setting up that tower dive. And they were able to blow up Afari relatively quickly. Um, but uh, again, Origin, Origin read the play and they end up punishing. So every time XL try to force something, Origin very quick to react. And we've seen Origin over the first few weeks of the split actually really struggle not dying in the early game. In the first weeks one to three, they had 84 total deaths across the course of the entirety of their games. And we're going to talk about that afterwards because we have another replay uh -huh. up towards this top lane. Yeah, so we can see here's the dive coming out from uh, the duo of Expect and Kedril. Uh, the flash very quickly comes out from Expect. He uses the slow to try and uh, create a gap between him and Cold. Unfortunately for him, Cold has the Predator. Mithy's also roamed up with him, which means that he can't really get out of this situation. Mithy realizes, okay, that's a free kill. Let's see if I can land a hook on the Kedril. Uh, just barely misses it, though. That he does. Now, we can talk about death later, because I want to talk a, a little bit more about this Essence Reaver Civip. Patrick's got it in the bottom lane. Last game, we saw Reckless and Healersang really pushing in that lane a lot more. You know, they got a lot more damage onto the turret. They were looking at taking the tower down by this point. 
that seems to be the objective for Origin, but they seem to be struggling to do it as quickly as Fnatic does. Yeah, but I still think it's just a good item, right? Because uh, Civ is very mana intensive. She gets crit and she gets... Uh, what do you call it? The other one? Crit. She has crit damage and she gets crit rate from uh, the item. Oh, hang on. Right in the bottom lane, Smithy gets caught up with the concussive blows. Trisha Bush will go through him. Mithy goes golden, but he's not going to be getting any medals for that play. He's down. XL get their second kill of the game. Well, Kedril's still being pretty active on the map right now. He's found a kill top and he's been able to find a kill bot too. Um, so this is good for XL, but right now they're being pushed under the towers and they are struggling a little bit in terms of the gold department. But overall, I think the item is good. What I really like about it is it means you can go essence it into crits uh, item like the rapid fire and then you can go with an infinity edge because you yep. don't need more wave cliff and things like the static ship you don't need more attack speed uh, it's not as valuable to you so just instead get more damage get more autos you've got a slew of wave player on the side of origin with yeah, the corky so. and with the civet a little bit struggling maybe on the side of xl though you know as you're not the best at wave clearing leblanc has to jump in so she's sacrificing some of her damage oh i mean like xl have no wave clear. uh so it's it's really bad um but again their whole game plan was to get ahead in terms of the lanes they have leblanc and they have yorick oh. very strong laners okay just still down here we'll be spotted on a ward cold and mythy turn away straight away because sing coming in from the side as well but the hook onto kedro knocked back that's an easy enough kill and now expect teleported in might be in a very tough position because our father's on that front line expect trying to run away but patrick just continuing to put the boomerangs at the back gets the beer beyond death they chase him away if will go down as well but soon this tower shortly to follow you have to feel just actually jumping forward there Hook not quite connecting for Mithy, and eventually Origin will be able to push in for the first tower of the game. And once again, another great punish from the side of Origin. XL tried to set up a play, but Origin were already ahead of the curve. They had the Rift Herald already set up to siege onto the tower. Jesper and Kasing got zoned away by the teleport from Alfari, and expect TP in way too late, meaning the jungle was already dead, and he came in at a numbers disadvantage. So XL, they just continue to fall further and further behind. Their two solo laners aren't getting the leads that they really need to threat on a side lane and that means the origin they're going to continue to scale work towards those core items that they need and now nuke duck seeing special jumps in wants to try and get a bit of a punish down uh, and you have to feel that this game is uh, very much in origins hands now yeah xl unable to make the early plays perhaps they wanted to through the lease in this yorick not doing as much as they wanted it to in the top lane and origin with pushes like this have just started to open up the map so you can see here Jessica and Kasing are really stuck. And I love the decision making from Origin to just immediately turn onto Kajal. They they go onto one side of the flank and they hard commit and they actually end up finding a kill. And with the teleport coming in from Alfari, it means that again, XL are further split up. And it's just overall a really good response from Origin. Very patient, exactly what they needed to do, and it guarantees them another tower. And now in the top lane, Cold here once again, Cold is unstoppable! That Gracchus is doing absolute work. 4,000, well, 3,500 gold need now for Origin. They've started to get towards that Trinity Force uh, power that we talked about, the first item. Already first item on Alfari as well. Kajal misses the kick, but goes in. Alfari with a stain away. Special here with the chase gets one, but Kajal's going to follow shortly after. And Origin can just push in for this second tower. Trusha Barrage actually coming all the way from that bottom lane. Don't think it's going to do too much. Doesn't even hit any of the minions. And every time XL tried to do anything, OG are very quick to respond. Teleport comes in from Nuke Duck to find himself a kill. Uh, Cold setting up the dive with Alfari means they secure themselves their eighth kill or seventh kill of the game, translating it then into the eighth kill. And now they're setting their eyes on the next tower of the game. Kasing gonna try and interrupt this though. Yeah, Nuke Duck's so safe on the Corky. Like we, we talked about it a little bit in Picks and Bands, how safe the Origin lineup is. It's so difficult, unless you start snowballing against them really to catch any of them out. There is a bit of scaling on the side of XO, you know, as you're still very strong in the late game. LeBlanc can still nuke people if she catches them out, but you have to feel that Origin are going to keep just upping the tempo piece by piece and start to clear out a lot of these towers. It's one of those things, though, where um, in theory, yes, that's great, especially when Origin play around something like a Baron. You have Ezreal poke and you have LeBlanc poke and the enemy team can't really do any objective, but Origin have so much wave clear and they have really good scaling of their own that they can just keep these waves pushed in all the time. So it's really difficult for XL's comp to get into a situation where they can actually leverage this poke. Um, so they're in a bit of a dire situation right yeah. now. They need Origin to really make a big mistake if they want to stand a chance of coming back into the game. Is that all they're waiting for? Is that their only opportunity back into this game? Um, a little, yeah. Okay. Uh, because the thing is, um, XL have drafted themselves a 1-3-1 one one comp. They, they ideally wanted to send Expect off onto a side lane, but Origin now have such a big gold lead that 
it's way easier for them. Let's say they group up as four, yep. right? And you have Alfaris sitting off the side lane trying to hold Expect off. Um, they can just be like, well, it's way easier for us to force things as a four than it is for you to force something as a one. Uh, oh, maybe. Cold pops the top watch. There's the glacial fissure as well. Special in with a chase. Double distortion. They get him. That's what you need. Make the picks, but Alfari now has the flank position. Jessica has to flash away. You can see Special still with the chains. Alfari going low. Hook in for Mitty. Doesn't quite connect. Special tried to get onto Alfari on the back line, but now he is very, very low. Just forced away. Also, Jessica falling off towards the top side of that fight. So you can see, even though XL find themselves a pick, when the fight actually started, OG yeah. then just turned it around and melted through XL, and it'll be another objective going in favor of Origin. And, um, while XL, if they're able to find more of these picks and they can catch out more members of Origin, it's a way for them to come back into the game. Um, right now, they're just in such a big deficit, it's difficult to translate it into anything. So this is good from XL. They recognize that they have a control wood in the brush. OG doesn't really have proper pressure, um, and Cold dies very quickly. The big thing here is that Alfar is able to join the fight much before the Yark is, so it doesn't really end up being a numbers advantage in favor of XL. Uh, a good flash there from Alfari to dodge out from the kill as well. And they can just continue to chase down, keep this in a 4v4, and uh, and then they're able to just win out. I want to give a little bit of credit, of course, to Special, who is trying to make these picks, who's actually playing relatively well for his first game on the LEC stage. But across the other side, you've got three or four players who are playing very well uh, for Origin, and they can just set up for the next objective. Cloud Drake up in 18 seconds, Baron up as well. Uh, need to see how the vision control is up towards that Baron because at the moment it looks like it's mostly in favor of XL. Some deep wards perhaps for Origin and they'll want to rectify that situation before they do anything more. I think Origin's going to look to play around Dragon right now. Uh, they've invested two control wards into the river. They're pushing out bot. They have the package as well. They're just getting priority in mid and then they'll move back down uh, towards that objective. And Nick Duck just going to use the package to get out of that dire situation. Oh, it's so dire. I'm sure for at least half a millisecond so he was danger. like, oh no, not a Yorick. What will I do? I mean, Yorick with training force is scary, dude. I told you, that item. You you doubt me, right? However, I was playing 3v3 with Ender last night. Okay, yes, yeah, so let's use your 3v3 experience as yeah, but the hang on. end of we the field. Were, we were stomping this Yorick, right? Okay. We were destroying him. Mm -hmm. And he was playing, uh, Ender was playing Rek'Sai, I was playing Nocturne. Both of us could 1v1, 1v2, their Nocturne, their uh, Yorick and the Volley Bear. Okay. And he got his Trinity Force, and we couldn't 1v1 him anymore. He was level 12. He kept killing us. We lost that game because of Yorick. So I, I apologize for being afraid of this champion, because we should have won that game, Medic, and I entirely blame Ender. <laughs> he should have stopped trying to 1v1 the Yorick. I said, let's work together. He goes, no, my pride will not let me. That sounds a lot like Ender, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very much... My favorite, my favorite line uh, is, you know, we've already talked about how Rek'Sai is getting buffs next patch. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> there was one of these things where... Um, he, he tried to do this thing on Rek'Sai, and then it doesn't work, and then he goes, Oh no, that doesn't come out this patch! <laughs> <laughs> and just out of the blue, he was like, Oh no, that's not until next patch! Uh, so yeah, that was funny. But yeah, I entirely blame him. Rek'Sai's really bad champ. Okay, three. so if, if Origin start one at a time feeding into this Yorick, yes. then we know that XR will be able to win the game. scary point. That's the moment in which XR stand a chance. But at the moment, Origin coming off a win against Shao last week, looking just as strong as they did against their former opponents. And with a 4,000 gold lead, finally cleared out those outer towers, have a tier two down in that bottom lane. They're in a very strong spot. At, like, we, they got the Cloud Drake. I now feel like Baron is probably their next point, but they have quite a lot of wave clan, can just push in without it if they so desire. So uh, the thing about Baron is it just helps you break into the base, which is always a difficult thing to do. Um, for Origin, the actual best case scenario for them is more about setting up vision in the river and then trying to find a pick and then translate that into a baron uh, but the the cool thing about their composition is they have so much wave clear and because of the corky they have a decent amount of mobility it means it's really easy for them to keep these waves pushed and just keep dancing back and forth uh see so yeah, i think origins comp is really good i love the fact that corky's back in there like, i don't know if other people are but no, i really like this champion i really dislike corky just in terms of play style, because I, I, you never really get any action mid, and you just like wave clear for days. I mean, that's true. And eventually he just sits there and pokes rockets at you from long range. But I really like, like what he can do boring. in the mid game. Like his I'm playing Rakan, really cool. you hit me with one racket, rocket, and I'm dead. Excellent, great fun. Oh, he's actually picked up a zeal fourth. I thought he'd go straight for the infinity edge there. Maybe he wants to get a, uh, a rapid fire cannon before with just the BF sword. Yeah. 
We'll see. That gives them that extra range to poke people. Ah, see, this is really good awareness. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, take a quick look at your mini-map. What you'll notice is that uh, Nukeduck did not push past the river. Why? Because his team doesn't have control over the river. The vision is entirely littered in XL's favor. So he's waited for mid to push, um, and then he's moved into the river with his jungler, and now he finds a kill. And so this, ah, really good League of Legends there. Love that. Fight starting in the mid lane as well as uh, Farmy jumps into the midst of Sing expecting Cadrill. Uh, Jessler, sorry. Flash in for Patrick, going very aggressive. The hook lands on to expect. Well, in back, there's the ignite as well. Patrick can put the boomerang down and cold. His seventh kill of the game on AP Gragas. A lot of kill secures from Cold, I feel, this uh, game. No, he's is... doing it all himself. <laughs> Better using... jungler wins, Vedius. He's been using that ultimate to secure oh. a lot of hits. Mithy not going to follow up on the hook. Oh, just enough damage from Specialist to take down a Mithy, though. So that will be another uh, objective going in the pockets of Origin. And again, I, I just really like the, the series of plays. The problem for Kadros is he was in the river when it wasn't his turn, Medic. He didn't have pressure in mid. The rest of his team couldn't support him. And it was Origin's opportunity to move into the river, and he ends up getting punished for it. It happened earlier on in this game. It happens once again. And uh, Origin, very quick to capitalize, use the Sivir ult to find themselves some kills in mid lane as well. So 5,000 is the gold lead now for Origin. They'll likely, after resetting, look to set up objectives, uh, sorry, set up vision rather, in the river to start playing around this Baron once again. Makes a lot of sense. You've got two items, Sivir, almost up towards three. You've got Rapid Fire Cannon finished on your Corky as well. Uh, up towards that infinity edge and cold now with the zonyas for himself uh, this is the traditional gragas build we see now but it has a huge amount of burst if you can connect onto a squishy target yeah it's really annoying uh mickey tells me all the time about how strong gragas mid is and i just refuse to believe him yeah but you play nocturne mid Venus. yeah but that's broken i'm diamond what elo with you yeah that's what i thought <laughs> anyway so here's the pick uh Kedril and special or special trying to help Kedril out and oof, there's the damage from that ap gragas able to lock him down very quickly and the, the main problem for uh, them was that not only are they behind in goal but the rest of xl couldn't help support and when they tried to move towards helping uh the rest of og immediately engage and while it takes them a little while to actually find those kills uh it still ends up going heavily in the favor of origin and they end up converting it into a town we managed to get a couple of kills off the back of it. As so we saw at the end here, Mithy does go down. Uh, it's good stuff from Special to find the pick. And there is some poke potential from XL. There's a lot of squishy targets on Origin. If Jessica and Special can land in some of this poke, pick off one person I don't think before Mithy the actually starts. got the heal there. Poor guy. But you're right. Um, if XL can find those picks, then maybe there's a chance. Maybe. But things look dire right now, Medic. It is only 5,000. I mean, that is... Only? That ain't only, mate. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a sizable sum. I mean, the important thing is to look at the actual item difference. Yeah. And you can see that uh, Origin's mid laner has effectively an entire item over special, and uh, the AD carry has three items versus... Well, technically it's three, but because it's not a fully stacked uh, tier Seraphs. of the goddess... Yeah. Seraphs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then Jessica's not really at three items. So. It's on his way. He's on his way. And Ezreal sure. scales so well. So well. Even on 9.3, hasn't been changed at all. Yeah. Actually, I think uh, some of that gold difference, though, will be sitting on cold in the jungle. He's actually got about 2,000 of it because he's sitting on those seven kills. 9,300 to about seven and a half. Uh, and there's about 2,000 in the mid lane as well between uh, Nuke Duck and Special. Uh, it does. This Corky take over the game just as much as old Corky used to do? Because yeah. it used to be you get to three items, there's basically nothing you can do against him. Well, I mean, there are. I mean, you can do things against which is really, really yeah, hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, because he's. Like, this is actually something I haven't mentioned yet, but the fact that he has teleport and has package means he's actually pretty strong in side lane as well. Uh, and one of the reasons why he's good into LeBlanc is he can oh. somewhat match it in the side lane. What's going on here, Vedius? Uh, Origin just pushing in the top lane and XL like, okay, we'll take one mid lane. Now we're going to lose your inhibitor turret here, XL. Origin take it. They're pushing for the inhibitor as well. And still, Yorick Mori pushes in the mid lane by himself. That's the inhibitor down. Origin just see their moment to strike and take down in here in the top lane. Yeah, but here comes the split push Yorick. Oh yeah, that made in the mist doing so much work. I do want to give a shout out to uh, our graphics and statistics team. We have inhibitor timers in the bottom left corner now, Ooh. in case you haven't seen them. Nice. They're very cool little things. Yeah, they are super cool. Um, now, Baron, what happens? Origin, not going to bother with it right now. They have no controls in their inventory. A lot of sweepers are on cooldown, so they're going to reset. Uh, Cole didn't realize he was standing on top of a ward, so his back gets interrupted. And now with Origin securing themselves the top inhibitor, it's one of those, um, I heard LS say it, 
of the inhibitors to lose, it's probably the best one um, because yeah. it's the closest one to Baron. And it's like looking at the bright side of oh, a 100%. bad situation. Do you know what I mean? So it's like if you lose both your hands, of the hands to lose, you want to lose your non-dominant one. So I'm right-handed. Of my hands to lose, the left one is the better one. Exactly. Yeah. You get the idea. Now, XL have actually decided, let's just commit to the Baron. Urgot is bot. He does have teleport. He's going to teleport in. Yeah, he 8,000 HP it's on this Baron. Roll. XL still on it. There's the on the hunt. New Duck trying to get some damage in from the side for the unbreak. Oh, stop him for the moment. There's the hook. Mithy pulls back. Expect already. New Duck got to kill his speed and knock back. Pulled into the fear beyond death. And this is a slaughter. A bloodbath in the Baron pit. Only Yesla survives. He's forced away up towards the top side of this. Don't think he's going to be able to do too much as Mithy chases him away. And Origin will take the Baron straight out of XL's hands. Yeah, and just the... Oh! He dies cold. He shoots. He scores. He finds another kill. He Pants his kitty out even more. And XL, they realized that the game was falling out of control. They were only going to get out scale. They needed to make a play right then and there. And so they did it. But LG, they have their eyes set on ending the game. They have the Baron, but they have three members. This looks like it's going to be it. Yeah, Nexus Towers in their eyes. This is a pretty clean, methodical play here from Origin. And they should take the win against XL. Played perfectly to their composition. And Origin will take their fifth win of the season going into the halfway mark with a winning record. Origin, de excuse me, definitely on the upswing. Upswing? <laughs> I do love Ups a good upswing. <laughs> um, five and four, as you mentioned, this is great for Origin. Uh, many question marks were surrounding the team over yep. their first half of the, uh, of the split. Struggling against a lot of the top end, but something that Deficient was adamant about. Ah, we had a really tough schedule, you know, and as this bit progresses, we'll get better. And I mean, he was right. Five and four, yep. sitting in the middle of the pack right now. I think they're tied with Splice. Uh, so definitely a good scoreline to be sitting at. And it just makes that middle of the pack more interesting. Because now we have teams like Fnatic, like Origin, looking to contest those spots, try and fight for those playoff opportunities that will be coming as we progress throughout the spit. One. Split. One. What's wrong with my Three. words? Oh, yeah. <laughs> have a good swing in a spit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, great game overall from Origin. I like their draft. And to me, it just felt like that they recognized every play that XL was trying to make, and they responded perfectly every single time. Yeah, and a lot of it was on the back of Cold as well, who had an incredible Gragas performance. Uh, gonna have a look at those plays in just a moment. Um, like it, it was, the like Cold did a lot of good stuff for Origin in the early game. Yeah, many people often go Cold doesn't do anything, Cold isn't really the point of this team, um, but I feel like in this game especially, he was able to showcase his understanding of where to be on the map, and he was able to punish multiple times uh, working with the rest of his team. So I like that we're seeing a lot more early game involvement from the side of Cold. I think his Gragas was very good, uh, even though I do think that he kills secured one too many kills with his ultimate. Overall, it was for the benefit of his team. And then you have uh, fights like this. XL realized they were on their last legs, and uh, Origin quick enough to clean up around the Baron pit. Yes, yes, yes. Good stuff from the side of Origin. Uh, they will now have... Because uh, usually we... What's the word? We You just kind of repeat yep. the, the split once again. So I believe Origin uh, tomorrow... G2. G2 already. So, yeah. you know, like, yeah. They've definitely been on, fire. A, they've been on an upswing, and now they're immediately back into the gauntlet once again against the very top opposition of G2. Um, we'll see if they can maintain this strong performance. I like the fact that we're seeing more consistency from this team. Yes, Alfari did die, technically isolated once again, but in his defense, he got dived 2v1, so I'll give him that one. He has died isolated in every single game once so far. <laughs> Is that nine ISO deaths out of nine games, and it has been like once. once but that one I'll give him. He didn't die yeah. 1v1 that time. Okay. And it wasn't his fault. He got dived. And the team even got a counter kill off That's the back true. of it. So I think it's fine, Alfari. That one I'll give Not you. every ISO death is equal yes. to every other ISO yes, death. Yes, that's true. Now, the solo deaths, that's the problem. <laughs> Not <laughs> as good. But be sure to check out the Kia player at the game vote on Lol at Lolly Sports on Twitter, where you can vote for Cold, Nuke Duck, or Patrick. Mm. I think Cold, Cold had a great performance, yeah, but I also think Patrick Cold. had a really good performance. I mean, he on played Civit. I can't give it to Civis, man. Hey, Reckless got it last time. <laughs> Again, I can't give it to Civis, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, after the break, Creature and videos will tell you how SK Gaming can start beating the top teams as they face off against Vitality. It's you, that is.